A person committing a bad deed for years on end. One day they decide, I'm not going to commit this anymore. What made them decide that? Because of Allah. So Allah says, oh, you deserve credit for that. Don't you? Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. We always praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we shall continue to praise him upon all conditions for every condition that he has set for us is good for as long as he is pleased with us. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his household, his companions. We ask Allah to bless them, to bless every one of us, to grant us all goodness, peace and mercy. Amen. My brothers and sisters, this is the first light upon light of 2019. We could put it that way. We could also say it's the last light upon light of 2018. We could put it that way. So when he says moments ago that it's the last of the light upon light this year, I think it depends what you're referring to. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. He says he's referring to the Hijri calendar. MashaAllah. Uh, my brothers and sisters, I've been given a topic to speak on. To do with repentance, the repentant and the one who accepts repentance and so on. It's to do with seeking the forgiveness of Allah. Its benefits and why it should be done. By the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you and I know that before we came onto earth, Allah created Adam, not on the earth, but from the earth. Do you know what that means? If you listen carefully, it's amazing. The body I have, the body you have, is actually from soil, from dust. You thought of that? Allah speaks about how He created mankind and He speaks about the salsal. You know, in, in the Quran, Allah uses several terms to refer to the dust, the sand, the soil, the clay, etc. These are not contradictions, but different levels. When you add water to the soil, when it becomes mud, it becomes clay, it becomes harder, and it becomes dry after some time if you were to leave it, and so on. So this is how Allah created Adam, alayhi salam. Why did Allah take from the earth? Why didn't He take something from Mars, from, from the moon? Why didn't He take something from elsewhere? Why didn't he take something from Jannah itself? But no, he decided to take from the earth, the different tints of the soil. And that is the complexions we have, the, the races that we belong to and so on within our genes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he created us in order to test us. He says this, he says this, I created you in order to test you. People ask, why did he have to do that? I don't know. It was up to him. He did it. And you know what? You can ask him one day, but you are here right now. You need to live your life within a certain way. And if you do, you will feel the goodness within you. You will feel discipline. People ask me about Islam. So many rules, regulations. I always say that's the discipline that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to live by. He wants you to lead a clean life, clean in every way. Business dealings clean. Your mouth is clean. What goes into your mouth is clean or what came out of your mouth is clean. Your relationships are clean. Everything else is clean. Subhanallah. That is Islam. Clean. Cleanliness in worship. You worship your maker alone. You don't just look at something you like and start prostrating to that thing that you like. No. It is Allah and Allah alone who deserves the prostration because He made you. So Allah created Adam alayhi salam in a place called Jannah. And there is a huge discussion as to what Jannah that actually was with the ulama making mention of the opinion that it is called Jannatul Ibtila. A special garden where Allah had created it in order to make man so that man would then do what he was meant to and then be sent onto the earth. So if you look at Adam alayhi salam, he committed a sin, didn't he? What was the sin? Yes, he ate from the tree, mashallah. People say, well, you know, it was a fault of the woman. I don't know if you've heard that, right? In actual fact, that is totally wrong. You don't, the men do something wrong and then blame the women. I think it's typical up to today. That keeps on happening, right? To be honest, they were both guilty. 
They, they both did wrong. One did wrong and then the other did wrong. They both did wrong, subhanallah. But it was part of the plan of Allah. Why? Because there is an act of worship that didn't take place yet. What was it? Seeking forgiveness. The angels have the capacity only of obeying Allah. They don't have the capacity to disobey Allah. So what's the point of saying that they did istighfar yet? Yes, they do praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they've never sinned. La Allah ma amarahum wa yaf'aluna ma yu'marun. Allah describes the angels by saying they never transgress against Allah. They do exactly as they are ordered. So there is no tawbah in that sense from the angels. On the other hand, you have the devil, you have shaitan. Shaitan has never repented to Allah, never ever. Had shaitan repented to Allah, he would have been a saint. So shaitan didn't repent to Allah when he committed a sin. And what was the sin of the devil? Worse than the sin of Adam. Adam alayhi salam, he was promised two things by the devil. For those two things, he committed the sin. Do you know what those two things were? Do you know what those two things were? Shaitan tells him, هَلْ أَدُلُّكَ عَلَى شَجَرَةِ الْخُلْدِ وَمُلْكٍ لَا يَبْلَى Amazing. Up to today, we're searching for the same two things. Should I show you a tree that if you were to eat from it, you'd never age and you won't ever die? Woo! <laughs> Wouldn't you love to know that tree? MashaAllah, MashaAllah, right? You wouldn't age and you wouldn't die. No dying. Shajarat al-khuld. Al-khuld means khalid. You're going to be there forever. If you eat from this tree, no death. You're not going to die. You're not going to age. I want to know what tree that is. That's what man would say. But if shaitan is telling you this, if it's in the transgression of Allah, don't do it. That's what happened. Adam alayhi salam fell in the trap. What was the second thing? Wamulkin la yabla. Should I show you this tree? You're going to eat from it. And you know what? You will have number one, no death. Number two, you'll have mulk, ownership, property, wealth that will never deplete. Oh, wow. Two things we're looking for up to today. You want a lot of money. You want wealth. You want things. You want material items. That's on one hand. And the other hand, you never want to age. You never want to grow older. And who wants to die, by the way? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a good death. May Allah give us Jannatul Firdaus. May Allah keep us happy. May Allah grant us forgiveness. Amin. So my brothers and sisters, here comes the devil. And the devil conned Adam alayhi salam. And why did the devil con Adam? Because the first sin was actually perpetrated by the devil himself. So when someone says the first sin committed, and then they talk about what Adam alayhi salam did, they're referring to humankind. But there were sins committed by other kinds prior to humankind. And this is the example of shaitan. What was his sin? When Allah created Adam, Allah says, prostrate as an act of recognition, not of worship, to Adam. Now this prostration was per the instruction of Allah. We are not allowed to prostrate for anyone besides Allah. In our set of rules and regulations. In fact, immediately after that, as they came onto earth, Prostration was prohibited for anyone besides Allah. Prostration prohibited for anyone besides Allah. If that prostration is a prostration of worship. As rules and regulations continued over time, it became prohibited even if it was just a sign of respect. Allah says, no, you don't prostrate as a sign of respect, but there are other ways of showing your respect. So if you look at the time of Yusuf alayhi salam, there was a prostration as a sign of acknowledgement of rank. It's no longer permissible with us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. So, Iblis refused to prostrate. Number one, any one of us refuses to prostrate for Allah, we're actually doing wrong. You see, any one of us refuses to prostrate for Allah, we're heading in the wrong direction. So don't ever refuse to prostrate. I gave you an example in my previous talk about the magicians at the time of the Prophet Musa alayhi salam. How many prostrations? One. He did one. They did one. They got the forgiveness of Allah. This guy refused one. He got the curse of Allah. You see? You see what's happening here? 
And with us, mashallah, we engage in prostration for the sake of Allah. And we will and we shall and we should and we must and we do. So therefore, we deserve the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here comes the shaitan. He said, Ana khayrum minhu. You know why I'm not going to prostrate? I'm better. I'm better than him. I'm better than him. When you think you are superior, you are automatically inferior. Automatically. So any one of us, when we start thinking, why did Allah give that person virtue over us? We are automatically defying Allah. Why did Allah favor this person and not favor me? That is jealousy. It eats away at your good deeds, just like the fire would eat away at a dry log. That's what the hadith says. Inna al-hasada ya'kulul hasanat kama ta'kulul narul hataba. But you know, hasad and jealousy eats away your good deeds. Your good deeds become depleted, just like the fire would devour a dry log. But Iblis was jealous. The Satan was jealous of Adam. He refused to prostrate. Number one, that prostration was an instruction of Allah. He then said, I am better than this guy. That's why I'm not going to prostrate. And Allah cursed him. Now he said, wait, oh Allah, if you give me some time, I'm going to show you this man is not who you think he is. But Allah chose something else for man. Allah chose an act of worship that was not given to others. What is the act of worship? Something known as tawbah, repentance, forgiveness. And Allah says, I will continue to forgive for as long as my worshiper continues to seek forgiveness. Did you hear that? I will continue to forgive for as long as my worshiper continues to seek forgiveness. So keep seeking forgiveness and be convinced that Allah has forgiven you every time. Never does Allah say, I reject Forgiveness when someone asks for it. Never does he say, I don't want to forgive. No, he always forgives. You need to know that. For as long as you have admitted your sin, you regret it, you seek his forgiveness and you promise him not to do it again. At the moment, I promised Allah I'm not going to do it again and I believed I wouldn't. Somewhere down the line, I repeated it. I need to go back again, seek the same forgiveness and I'll be forgiven again and again. And if it happens a third time, a third and a fourth, until a time comes, when Allah calls out to the angels, do you see my worshiper? He keeps seeking my forgiveness because abdi anna lahu rabban anni My slave now knows that he has a Lord who can either forgive him or punish him. That's why he keeps seeking my forgiveness. I want you to bear witness that I have totally forgiven him completely. Mercy of Allah. Keep, keep repenting to Allah. No matter what you've done and how many times it's been repeated. But when you seek the forgiveness, make sure you're genuinely saying, I'm not going to repeat this again. May Allah strengthen us so that we can fulfill that promise unto Allah. So if this Adam alayhi salam, he happened to sin. When he sinned, immediately his body, his private parts, began to become exposed. They were covered in a way Allah knows best by his own body. And thereafter, he became ashamed of himself. They quickly took leaves of the trees in order to cover themselves. Because when a person sins, my brothers and sisters, they're automatically conscious of whether someone's watched them or not. If they have belief in them and they have a slight consciousness of Allah, they will never commit a sin openly and publicly. The hadith of the Prophet ﷺ says, people will continue to be upon goodness for as long as they don't openly and proudly sin. That's why when someone sins behind closed doors, it's bad enough, but it's not as bad as a person who sinned openly out in the public. You remember this because it's part of your nature. What made you sin privately? Because you're a believer. That's why I sinned behind closed doors. I didn't want to sin openly because I don't want to encourage others to sin. I'm sinning behind closed doors. And I know it's bad and I know I'm not supposed to. But you know what? Because I'm conscious of Allah. And yes, I don't want others to think bad. I'm a believer. If you're not a believer, you wouldn't even bother. That's why the hadith says, إِذَا سَرَّتْكَ حَسَنَتُكَ وَسَأَتْكَ سَيِّئَتُكَ فَأَنْتَ مُؤْمِنْ If your good deed makes you feel happy and your bad deed makes you regret, then that's a sign that you're a true believer. We all commit bad deeds, all of us, to different levels. 
No one can say I don't. No one can say I'm spotless, sinless. No one can say I've never done something wrong. Every one of us, myself included, we do things sometimes that we would be embarrassed of had, had these things been exposed. But different levels. Some people do major things. Some people do minor things. But no one wants to be exposed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep covering us. Adam alayhi salam covered himself. His wife covered herself. And you know what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately was called upon. Was called upon by them too. You know what they said? Qala, the two of them said, Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna min al-khasirin. O oh our Lord, we have wronged ourselves. We have wronged ourselves. And if you don't forgive us, and if you don't have mercy upon us, we will be the losers. So Allah says, we have forgiven you. We have forgiven you, O oh Adam. Now you can go on to the earth. And now you know what to do. If ever you do something wrong, turn back to me. Subhanallah. That's what we were taught. So Allah wanted to show Adam what is to be done. That's why he kept him in a certain place. And the consequences of what he did, yes, he faced them, but Allah forgave him. And thereafter, Allah sent him onto the earth. When he came onto the earth, the lesson was for all of us that, look, you are the children of the same Adam. Wherever you falter, learn to turn back to Allah. He will still love you because he loves those who seek forgiveness. You cannot seek forgiveness if you didn't have a sin. Whoa. When you hear, Inna Allah tawabina, Allah definitely loves those who keep seeking forgiveness. Wouldn't it make sense that if we were perfect, we wouldn't seek forgiveness? Which means you've committed a sin, keep seeking forgiveness for this sin, for the next sin, for the next sin, and that's how you should lead your life right up to the end. And that's why the hadith says, The one who seeks forgiveness from a sin is equivalent to the one who hasn't committed the sin, especially when they do good deeds thereafter. You know, there are two things. If you say, oh Allah, forgive me, you're forgiven. But if you say, oh Allah, forgive me, and you change your life, then Allah says, hang on, I love you so much, you change your life for me, I'm going to take all your bad deeds you've done in the past and I'm going to convert them into good deeds on the right side of the scale and I'll present them to you on the day of judgment as good deeds. But why? Because you quit them only for me. Isn't that a good deed? Subhanallah. A person committing a bad deed for years on end, one day they decide, I'm not going to commit this anymore. What made them decide that? Because of Allah. So Allah says, oh, you deserve credit for that, don't you? If you change your whole life for Allah, you had a bad habit, you were on drugs or whatever else it might have been. So many bad habits, hooked onto porn for example. Bad habits, may Allah forgive us and strengthen us and our offspring, our children, our siblings and whoever else, even parents from amongst us have similar habits sometimes. Do you know what? If you quit it for the sake of Allah and you, each time you're tempted and you don't go, Allah's going to reward you big time. Big time. That's a fact. Because you know it's tempting, but I didn't do it. Why? Because of Allah. I used to do it in the past. No more. Allah says, well, hang on, hang on, hang on. It was so easy for you to just have done it. But because of me, you're not doing it. I'm going to take all the sins you've committed in the past. I'm going to convert them into the right side, in, into good deeds. Because subhanallah, for my fear, you've quit it. And not necessarily the fear of Allah. Some people quit sin because they fear Allah. But I tell you what, you quit sin because you love Allah. That's a higher level, much higher level. If someone says, I quit sin, I love Allah. Look at what he's given me. Look at what he's provided me. I've got a nose, I've got eyes, I'm breathing, I've got a brain, I've got so much. MashaAllah, tabarakallah, I'm looking forward to Jannatul Firdaus. And I love Allah so much for what he's bestowed upon me. And even the tests that he's, chal that he's challenged me with, for example. I will go through it by his help. And I love him, therefore I'm not going to sin or I'm going to turn back to Allah. I'm going to seek forgiveness. That is amazing. That is a beautiful way of looking at things. Some people... They do good deeds because they want to go to paradise. Some people stay away from bad deeds because they want to go to paradise. Some people do good deeds because they fear going into hellfire. They don't want to go into hellfire. So they keep doing good deeds whenever they think of hellfire, right? But you know who's the best of the lot? 
those who do good deeds and stay away from evil because of their connection with Allah, their love of Allah. They just love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will give you both. He will give you paradise and save you from hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. So on earth, we have been given bodies that we will not have in the hereafter. Did you ever know that? The body you have and I have right now, the brain, the mind, the eyes, the noses, the tongues, the lips, these bodies that we have right now, we're not going to be having them in the hereafter. In the hereafter, you go to Jannah, I go to Jannah, we will be having perfect bodies, not made of the soil and the dust of the earth. How will it be made? Allah knows best. What the height is, some hadith have made mention of. What, how it will be? As per your liking. Whoa. You're going to look as you like. Imagine flicking through the Instagram filters and you're just checking. <laughs> and that's really you. Oh, wow. So my paradise on earth, you think. No, Allah says, hang on, hang on, hang on. It's better than that. It's way beyond that. Everything can change. You know, that filter only changes to a certain extent. And it's false. And it gives you a fake sense of looking hot or whatever else it might be. No wonder why the batteries of all these phones start heating up and dying so quickly. May Allah grant us ease. But subhanallah, in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will have what you want. And you know what's the beauty of it? If you are looking at someone, you will see them the way you want to see them. And they will be the way they want to be, even if the two are different. Allahu Akbar. Because someone was telling me that if I'm going to be with the same husband of mine in Jannah, I'd rather not go there. I said, so you want to go to hell? You want to go to hell? They said, well, I don't know what to say, but you know, it's as good as hell with this guy. And then I said, you know what? You will be for each other as you want the other to be. And you will be for yourself as you would like to be. And each one will. And they say, but how? I said, I don't know how. I just know I've got to get to Jannah. That's all. I've got to go to Jannah. If I were to ask the young people, what would you like in Jannah? Say something you want in Jannah. What would you love to have in Jannah? Tell me. What would you love to have in Jannah? Say it. Yeah, I'm asking you. <laughs> say Supercars. Wow, I was waiting for that answer. Right. Supercars. We're living in 2018. Name a supercar for me. Lamborghini. Allahu Akbar. Can I tell you what? That Lamborghini 2019, let's give you the 2020 Lamborghini, the latest one. In 2050, you will not want it yourself. Do you agree? You won't want it yourself. You're going to say, wow, what a crappy choice. Imagine everyone's got the latest stuff in Jannah that you mind boggling. And you've got a Lamborghini. A'udhu billah. La wa la quwata illa billah. What a joke. Allah, are you getting my point? I tell you why I say this. Nothing that's on earth qualifies to go to Jannah. Nothing at all. When you came, you came alone. Everything you've used on earth is from the earth. Completely everything, 100% of the stuff you have here is from here. Can I tell you what? Your leather is from the animals. The cotton from the ground. What else? The food you eat from the same ground. The Lamborghini, the metal is from the mind, from the, from the mountains. What else? What else do you see in the car? All of it. The fuel is from the ground. Everything. Nothing came from Jannah. Besides the, the, the black stone we have and the piece of Jannah in Medina. But that too is of a different level. Imagine nothing that's of benefit to you here is from Jannah. You don't even know what's Jannah. And people are saying, I want this in Jannah, that in Jannah. I'll have the best kitchen in Jannah. Sister, you don't have to have a good kitchen in Jannah. You just have to think of what you want to eat and it's going to be in your mouth. Subhanallah. What kitchen would you like? Subhanallah. Oh, I couldn't afford it in, 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 in the dunya. I need it in Jannah. Relax. You're aiming so low. Subhanallah. Don't just say, oh Allah, grant me Jannah. Trust me, once you get there, you'll never ever be let down. People argue, how can a man get this in Jannah and a woman get that in Jannah? I tell you, that argument is from the devil because sometimes some of those narrations are not really valid. And even if they are valid, to be very honest with you, you don't need to worry. Allah promises you, فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِيهِ الْأَنفُسِ وَتَلَذُّ الْأَعْيُنِ Whatever your 
soul desires shall be yours allah will definitely make you happy in jannah whatever is delicious to your eyes shall be yours you think of it we'll give it to you but you have to get there first and think about it there it's like me telling you you know what we're going to this particular theme park and you start thinking you're going to have this and you're going to go on the on the big wheel and you're going to go on the what do they call it a roller coaster and you're going to go on the other ride and when you get there it's mind-boggling it's of a different level altogether and there's no there's nothing that you thought was there but you had already planned and when you get there you're going to have to make other choices way better than the ones you had in your mind you see so this is why we say you need to just seek the forgiveness of Allah and get to Jannah because the biggest way of getting to Jannah is through seeking the forgiveness of Allah none of us are perfect no one if you don't seek the forgiveness of Allah there's no chance that you're going to go into Jannah no I that's why the Prophet ﷺ did not need to seek forgiveness. He was perfect, but he used to seek forgiveness up to 100 times a day. So that if you and I followed his example, we would do the same. I promise you a year passes and we have not sought the forgiveness of Allah even 100 times in the whole year. And he used to do it every day and he didn't even need it. And we need it and we don't do it. Astaghfirullah wa atubu May Allah forgive me, forgive all of us. Say Amen. And this is why we need motivation. We need courage. You need to be strong. Strengthen yourself to do what pleases Allah. Try it. Try it with your salah. Read it on time and check how you feel. And do it solely for the love of Allah. I love Allah. And I know I'm weak. But I'm seeking His forgiveness. I'm going to try my best to do what He wants me to do. I know it's challenging. The environment out there is not so easy. Especially nowadays when they look at you and they start thinking things. You know? They start thinking things. They look at Muslims and they're just like, they think like the place is going to come down in the next few seconds. Not at all. Not at all. But that's what's happening. So it becomes more and more difficult. But I tell you what, you will not be able to run away from your identity. Not at all. Subhanallah, Allah will open your doors. You face the challenges Allah places in your life with a smile. And Allah will grant you that goodness. Seek the forgiveness of Allah. Never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Something's going wrong in your life. Seek the forgiveness of Allah. He will open the doors of sustenance as well. When Nuh alayhi salam was telling his people about seeking the forgiveness of Allah, do you know what he said? If you are on the same page with the owner of sustenance, he's going to give you. Imagine if I'm buddies with the richest person around. He will give me straight. If I'm in need, he's going to say, hey, hang on. Here, before I even ask, if I'm buddies with the person who has the, the most of something, the day I need a droplet of it, do you not think he's going to give me? But if you're not buddies with him, you've got a problem. So you and I, the best thing to do right now is to become buddies with Allah. When I say buddies here, yeah, I'm referring to a friendship with Allah. How does that come about? You need to try to get closer to Allah. You know the basics of Islam, the basics of what you're supposed to be doing and not doing and so on. Try to become closer and closer. And you know what? A sign of closeness unto Allah, a sign of closeness unto Allah, because there are many fakes. There are many fakes. A sign that this person is really close to Allah is that it shows in their character and conduct straight. So a person would fulfill salah five times a day. If they are humble, if they can smile at you, if they can talk properly to you, if they can offer you respect, even though you might be a nobody to them in terms of material wealth, they are really close to Allah. They've understood who you are and your value. A sign of a distance to Allah or from Allah is when you become harsh and hard hearted. Harsh. You find people, the beard goes right to the ground. In fact, it drags a few meters behind as well. Like, like it's a wedding gown. But you know what? They look at you and say, Astaghfirullah, A'udhu Billah, A'udhu Billah. And so, Wallahi, it's happening. That is not a sign of piety. It's not a sign of closeness to Allah. You're belittling a creature of Allah for what? Why are you talking so bad to someone who perhaps needs help in a different way and you need help in another way? You need to take it easy. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ It is a sign of the mercy of Allah that you are lenient towards those around you, O Messenger wasallam. Sign of the mercy. You want to know if Allah has mercy on you? Ask yourself, how lenient am I to those who are with me, around me, be they your relatives or not? If you're lenient, soft, polite, humble, you are definitely closer to Allah than those who are not. May Allah make it easy. So to seek the forgiveness of Allah, you need to change yourself as well. You need to make changes in your life. I ask Allah to forgive me, but I keep on going in my bad ways. No, 
Subhanallah. And this is why when you do good deeds, at times those good deeds automatically wipe out some of the bad deeds. It's called a kafara. A kafara means that which expiates. You have a good deed you've engaged in and you follow it up with another good deed thereafter. Salatul Jama'ah, another salah, another salah, one umrah to another umrah, etc. All those sins committed in the middle, the minor ones are gone, wiped out, forgiven by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So learn to seek the forgiveness of Allah. Have hope in the mercy of Allah. When you engage in acts of worship, they will automatically help expiate some of those sins or a lot of those minor sins that you and I may have committed sometimes unknowingly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen every one of us. So my brothers and sisters, I want to tell you something. إن الله تعالى يبسط يده بالليل ليتوب مسيء النهار ويبسط يده بالنهار ليتوب مسيء الليل حتى تطلع الشمس من مغربها حديث authentic Allah says سبحانه وتعالى through the blessed lips of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم that Allah stretches the arm Allah stretches his arm in order to forgive those who have committed sin by night during the day and Allah سبحانه وتعالى stretches it again during the the night in order to forgive those who have sinned during the day until the sun will rise from the other side, from the west. Do we seek forgiveness of Allah? Do we seek the forgiveness of Allah? There is another narration which we all know, I'm sure. يَنزِلُ اللَّهُ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى إِلَى السَّمَاءِ الدُّنْيَا كُلَّ لَيْلَةٍ حِينَ يَبَقَى ثُلُثُ اللَّيْلِ الْأَخِيرِ فَيَقُولُ هَلْ مِنْ تَائِبٍ فَأَتُوبَ عَلَيْهِ وَهَلْ مِنْ مُسْتَغْفِرٍ فَأَغْفِرَ لَهُ وَهَلْ مِنْ سَائِلٍ فَأُعْطِيَهُ a, a narration where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says another authentic hadith. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala descends to the lowest heavens when a third of the night is remaining. And he asks, is there anyone repenting that I can accept the repentance? Anyone seeking forgiveness that I can forgive them? Anyone asking me anything that I can give them? Surely we should be seeking that forgiveness from Allah. Allah becomes very happy when we seek the forgiveness of Allah. And this is why I say, Everything we have with us is from the earth, it shall be left onto the earth. You came into this world with nothing. You shall leave with nothing besides your deeds. That's what you're going to take with you, your deeds. So if you would like the material items of this world, remember, no matter how much you have amassed of this worldly life, it will only give you back two square meters for you to be buried. That's all. It won't give you more than that. The shroud that you have, the two square meters and you put in, that shroud is for respect. You are Banu Adam, you are a human being. You, you, you need that little bit of respect, subhanallah. So to honor you, you put in a shroud and you are buried two square meters, subhanallah. And how much did you have? You could have had the billions. It meant nothing. You are going to leave everything behind. So please, can you just hand me your cell phones before I leave? <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. I don't think you expected that one, right? <laughs> but mashallah, I'm also going to leave. So maybe I should give you my cell phone. Uh, my brothers and sisters, that was just on a lighter note, the end. I see my colleagues are here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of us and grant us goodness. I hope and I pray that the words I've said would motivate us to seek forgiveness out of the love of Allah. We seek forgiveness out of the love of Allah and keep seeking forgiveness and never lose hope and believe and be convinced that inshallah by the will of Allah, we will achieve that forgiveness and Jannah is going to come to us solely and only by the mercy of Allah, not by our deeds. But in order to achieve that mercy of Allah, we need one word. What is it? Try. Keep on trying. Keep on trying and never give up.